and we're back. And this week I'd like to introduce you to Brian Cook. He's an illustrator out of Portland, Oregon, who I found on TikTok while I was scrolling through at absolute goblin hours. So without further ado, let's talk art. Brian Cook draws butts on things. Yes, butts on things. It's just as adorable as it sounds. I was really enamored with this TikTok that he had that absolutely blew up. It is definitely viral of him just unboxing some of the books that he created with little sketches of butts on things. It is undeniably adorable, very, very quirky, very Portland, and uh, Brian Cook, he's a he's been working as an illustrator for a long time. He does a lot of really cool stuff. You can follow him on his, so all his social medias um, and see what he's up to, but he took some time to chat with me about um, just his rise to TikTok fame, uh, what it's like to be an artist here in Portland, and why he draws butts on things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him tell you about that. Uh, Brian Cook, B-R-I-A-N-C-O-O-K. Perfect, thank you so much. And you are an artist and illustrator here in Portland, but I found you on TikTok, actually, yeah. at like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna make any comments about my TikTok habits, but, uh, then I sent you a message via Instagram at Weird Goblin Hours um, because your TikTok kind of exploded, right? Yeah, it went pretty crazy. I, I posted, I had created a TikTok and people had like an account and people had told me um, that I should put stuff on there, but it's just one more thing. I had an Instagram account forever and I was dealing, I'm always dealing with a lot of projects and stuff. So I was like, okay, I will, I will, I will. And then I posted a, my first video a week and a half ago or so and it just exploded um in my like in my view exploded it had like uh over 200,000 views in 24 hours or something like that so pretty crazy yeah I'm gonna say just as my in my official capacity as a digital journalist um that's viral so uh, <laughs> I don't so know where the gauge is for TikTok so I was like I don't know how this is this is the first video <laughs> yeah and it was just a video of you unboxing your books right correct yeah so I had just I, I did a kickstarter back in the spring for a book that I wanted to do for a long time and I was taking videos to kind of update the kickstarter backers and I was like, all right, I already have these videos. I, I might as well learn how to do TikTok and kind of like put it together. And so I used that video of me just unboxing this book. But after it kind of blew up, um, I learned some things about TikTok. Like you can't edit, as far as I know, like what you post. So I didn't have a link to buy it. I didn't have anything about it. I just said like, my book is here or something like that. And then posted it. And sales just, I don't know how people found me. Um, I had to put up a link on my Etsy because that was the easiest thing to do to order it. Uh, but I couldn't ship it yet because I hadn't even fulfilled the Kickstarter backers yet. <laughs> so it was this crazy like crash course in how to market. <laughs> yeah, but that's incredible that like, because you, I think a lot of people have the assumption of TikTok kind of like you did, like either as a creator, it's just one more thing yeah. or it's just an app where like teenagers are dancing, which isn't incorrect. But there's also like a whole pocket of like creatives and the algorithm is so great that like I follow a lot of artists and I'm assuming because you're an artist and also because you're geographically close to me, I happen to stumble upon your content, you know what I mean? And then when I went to your Instagram, I was like, oh, holy shit, like a bunch of people from Portland are following this guy because you've been on Instagram for forever. I scrolled all the way to the back of your Instagram and truly, you've been there since like 2013 or something. Yeah, a long so, time. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I thought that was incredible. And your book is, somebody asked me, they're like, oh, like, what are you interviewing? I was like, oh, I'm interviewing an illustrator who draws butts on stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. Can you tell me a little bit about, you have a Friday tradition, which sort of yeah. spawns the book. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, so probably the biggest question I get is like how it started, how I started doing this. People seem to find it universally funny, but they have a question about like, how did you just start drawing like butts on random objects? Legitimate question. So um, let's see, 20, I think 2016 was the first one that I did. 
and I've always just like drawn goofy stuff and I do little warm up drawings and you sometimes I post them sometimes I don't and I was going to draw originally like a little um like a Starbucks cup like to go coffee cup um I was going to draw a little character and as I was kind of doodling it I thought it would be funny to have like the sleeve the hot sleeve as the shirt like a t-shirt and then as I was drawing, I was like, it's a little weird because it's like a shirt with no pants. So that's like a little Winnie the Pooh situation going on. And I don't know. And then I was like, well, that's actually kind of funny if I like turn it around and I just have the sleeve and like a little butt sticking out of the bottom. So I doodled it and I posted it on my Instagram, you know, like Happy Friday or something originally. And uh, people loved it. And so then the next week I was like, well, I'll do it again. It'll be like a fun little, like you made it through the week Friday tradition. And it's just kept going one week after another you know a couple of those videos in my mind on instagram you know went pretty big there was a drawing i did of uh, a taco and it was probably the most viewed little illustration drawing i had done so i was like oh i'll just keep doing it. it's a fun way to like end the week and now let's see friday is my this last one what uh 338 i think yeah so i've done a few <laughs> yeah, yeah. And why did you decide to turn it into a book? The book was, I've done a lot of shows, like I've done prints and originally, in fact, I don't own that first drawing, the one I did of a coffee cup. I sold it for like $10 on Etsy. And originally I was just selling each one every week. And I had no idea it was going to turn into a thing. But, but when people really started to like it, I did the Portland night market, which I don't know if you know about is one of the little shows um, years ago. And people that was the first time when I got a glimpse of like, well, people actually like this as a thing, they want to buy prints and stuff of it. So I started making prints and I started making t shirts and other stuff. And then the more shows I did the bigger collection of butts I had to sell. And so people like they couldn't decide about which one they wanted. So the book kind of came out naturally as like, well, here's an option for you. I can have like a whole kind of like art book of them. Cause kids, when I did, Rose, when I've done Rose City Comic Con and those other Comic Cons, they'll come up and just like, like stare at the booth. Like this is the greatest thing they've ever seen. You know, it's like their imagination come to life. And so this is something they could like page through and enjoy, you know. And it's so funny. Uh, it is precisely my humor. I was very tickled by it, but I think it just appeals to people because it's just very harmless and funny. Like, I, I don't know. It just, it really um, brought me some joy. And I think that that's kind of the, the, probably the consensus. And so I think that that's super cool. I mean, like if I walked into somebody's house and on their coffee table was a, a butts on things, I would feel like this person's probably kind of funny. Yeah. So I think that that's really great. And so you are, you sold out of the first printing yeah, through your have, Kickstarter and TikTok, right? And now yeah. you're on a, you're selling for a second? Yeah. So I sold, I mean, I had, I thought I had enough stock that was going to make like through next year. Like I could bring it to Comic-Con next year was my goal. And it sold out in four days after the, the TikTok video. So I still have, I have like five copies to send out today. Is one of the remaining ones <laughs> send out um and then i'm done with those orders but people still wanted it and so i talked to the printer and was like how long is it going to take it obviously takes time to print and ship and everything out so i put up like a pre-order link on my site for the second printing so that people can reserve a copy is that doing well as well yeah that's it's really? almost like a second kickstarter you know like wow. people are pre-ordering that you know, the second printing. And so that will kind of like take care of the, a bunch of the upfront costs for me printing the second one. So yeah, really exciting. That's really great to hear. How long um, have you been, so you've been doing the butt drawings for a long time. Yeah. Um, but you don't just do butt drawings. <laughs> you're, you're an artist, an illustrator. How long have you been doing, I guess, sort of professionally your job? Um, Really, I mean, I went to art school. I, I was born and raised in Michigan, and I went to, I always knew that I wanted to be an artist of some kind. And I went to art design school and um, got a degree in illustration. And then 
even in school, I was working for my first, one of my first big jobs I got hired on was for a comic book project that was like a literacy project for like inner city teens in Detroit uh, called Wireman, it was Wireman Comics. And it was, the goal of it was to give kids that were struggling readers something that was at their level, but more interesting, like the content was interesting. They weren't reading like Duck, Duck, Goose or, you know, like Dr. Seuss books, you know, the vocabulary was pretty easy, but the story was more, you know, young adult, which is cool. So I got that job, I guess, straight out of college and I worked with them for a few years and then did kind of freelance illustration on the side. But that was, let's see, 12, 13 years ago. Um, yeah, so 12, 13 years. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And I, I ask, I guess, because I talked to a lot of different kinds of artists here um, yeah. for the channel, like comic book artists, people who are just writers, people who, just writers, you know what I mean, people who only write, people yeah. who only stay in sort of the illustration realm. Um, and I always kind of ask this question, but like, do you have any advice for people who are interested in doing what you do? My advice, a lot of people ask me that and it's really tough because I feel like market wise, everyone's style and their illustration, everything is different. Like I can, you know, I, I can talk to people all day. I'm happy to give people advice, but what works for me doesn't always work for everybody else, you know, so it's <laughs> tough. I think the key is to kind of like, stay true to your style and just keep going. I'm, I'm a big believer in like work comes from hard work. So it's just like, you know, churning out work. I did two Kickstarters before this book that were funded at a much lower level, but mm -hmm. they were kind of like that stepping stone into, you know, a, a bigger project. So I think a lot of people are waiting to, um, you know, hit, hit something special and I think it's more important to just like keep going and the work will come to you that's been my philosophy it seems to work it's maybe like a long term <laughs> yeah no I think that that's great I think that that's attainable and also paints a broader picture of like yes you have a very cool job but it's a lot of work so yeah. <laughs> you know um that is certainly a reality um and I think important for people to know um and that kind of is sort of the overarching answer that I get from a lot of people who work in a creative space. Because there isn't like a ton of boundaries and you have to kind of create them for yourself and like keep going. So um, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and what is it like being an artist here in Portland where, I don't know, so I, well, I'm from the South, not, I'm not from like a cultured place in the South. So like, you know, coming to Portland, it seems like this like artist mecca. It was, I came from Michigan about 10 years ago and it was, I felt kind of the same way where in Michigan there were a lot of creatives, but when I came to Portland, it was just a whole different ball game, like a whole different world of people. And understandably, you can probably see, I have kind of like a weird style and a bizarre sense of humor. And I felt like that worked way better here in Portland, you know, to keep Portland weird and people, you know, seeing someone drawing butts on things like, oh my gosh, this is great. And I don't know if it would be the same <laughs> reaction in Michigan. Um, the first Kickstarter I did was a, it was a kid's book about, uh, the idea was that in movies, like ghosts float around with no legs. And so I wanted to make a book about the legs part. I was like, if the ghost, if the body is like a ghost, but there's no legs, they just float around, then the legs have to be somewhere. So I made this Kickstarter about legs, but it was like trying to pitch the idea of a kid's book about severed limbs to people was like a challenge. Definitely, you know, in the Midwest would be more of a challenge. So it's really fun to be here and people can kind of get that a little bit and have fun with it. Um, yeah. Do you have, uh, I feel like, I don't mean to like pigeonhole you into being like the butt guy, but like, do you have a favorite thing to draw do you what I guess what do you indulge yourself in when you're not drawing for a client or something like that you know what I mean yeah um I it's kind of a broad I guess a broad way to look at it. I just like drawing characters in general like making characters out of weird things drawing fun characters like giving giving like a cartoon personality I think is really fun and in a weird way, I think those two, those two Kickstarter books, the Severed Legs book and the 
the Butts book, the common thing when I think about it, about those two books are like trying to give these inanimate objects like a personality with no face or head or, you know, like they kind of have like a character, like you said, they're kid friendly, you know? And part of that is like the style and the colors and, you know, I'm not drawing anything offensive in them. Most parents are not like offended by the drawing. <laughs> um, but, and part of that is just like the style, like it's the challenge of like, how am I gonna take a taco and give it like a personality in itself without a face or hands or legs or anything like that that people are gonna enjoy. So I think that's kind of the core. I like, I like storytelling, I like the designing characters. Um, this past fall I did a project or in, do you know about Inktober? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did an Inktober project where you draw, for, for anyone that doesn't know, you draw an ink drawing every day for the month of October, and I did different um, pastries. I had like a murder mystery called Who Donut? <laughs> every day was like a different suspect. So I would take like, you know, is it gonna be a crueler today? Or, and what personality would that have? I had like what the, the old fashioned and it was like an old guy with like a cane, you know? So that kind of stuff I think is, is if I'm just sitting here like talking and doodling, that's usually what comes out is like weird little funky characters. <laughs> I love that because when I'm not doing comic stuff, um, I report on true crime. Um, so right up my alley. And I, I asked that question because like journalists, artists sometimes are not the best about self-care or exercising there. I hear a lot from people like I, I'm not exercising my art for myself. Um, or I feel burned out because I haven't drawn anything for myself or I don't feel like it or whatever. So um, that's why I asked. But I think that that uh, is great that you can find joy in the things that you're also, I guess, marketing and monetizing because I think that seems like it would get pretty exhausting if you couldn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. And I think that's why it works. Otherwise, it would be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm never drawing another butt. Um, yeah. Somehow <laughs> and, I've gotten tired of it. I don't know. You said you mentioned to me before we started recording that you frequent Rose City. You were headed to San Diego this year. Um, do you have plans to do that next year since all the cons were canceled due to the casual pandemic? Yeah, so sad. I um, yeah. the cons are have been one of my favorite things, and I think it's like I've done a lot of the art shows. But my stuff, I feel like fits better in the cons because I think the people that go to the cons just kind of get it more, you know, like that group team seems to think it's fun. So, and, and it's different, you know, you go to those cons and there's a lot of like redrawings of the same characters, which are not bad, but I think it's like overwhelming. And then you get to a booth that is just like butts on things like huge banner. I found that like the most obvious name is the easiest, you know, so I just put like butts on things that it is what it is, people get it. And so um, I, I was really sad not to be able to go to, to Rose City, uh, Emerald City. This year I was really ramping up the cons. So like Emerald City I was, I was working on trying to do. I had a, a table at WonderCon and then San Diego, I got in for the first year, which I was really excited about. For people that don't know, it was like really tough to get a table at in San Diego. So I was kind of ramping up and originally the book I was gonna try to bring to that and that kind of like obviously didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. But um, most of those events that they had to cancel, they automatically give you a space the next year. So I've, I've reelected to take them as long as everything shakes out. You know, I'll be there in the next, uh, the next year that they're hosting it. So I'm excited. I'll be back at San Diego, Rose City, uh, WonderCon, those three for sure. So uh, that, that'll be fun. Yeah, my website is where I've been taking the pre-order. So if people are interested in getting the book, um, I have a shop link there and it has just kind of everything outlined. And then I have like a merch shop. You, maybe you peruse it and uh, the Etsy shop. So there's like different channels. Yeah. Indeed. indeed. Um, I like your Baby Yoda butt sticker. I know. I mean, that's my, that's uh, maybe going to be my next pin, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm waiting to see if someone sends me a cease and desist for it, but it <laughs> I'm, uh, I was checking my, uh, I was checking the, uh, TikTok this morning and it says that my latest video has 600,000 views, which is intimidating. And I'm, uh, I'm going to go pack some stuff up. I think for people, that's my afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
good luck with that. Um, it's both probably a blessing and a curse. Um, yeah, so, yeah. It's a blessing. It's just a lot of, it was like overwhelming, but it's definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel good. I'm excited about it. So there you go. That's the story about butts on things. Um, I think the world would be a funnier place if there were just butts on mailboxes. But that's my kind of humor. Anyway, thanks so much to Ryan Cook for taking the time to chat with me, and please follow him on his social media, see what he's up to. The second printing of his book seems to be doing great, and if you'd like a copy, you can find that on his website, which of course was on that little lower third the entire time he was talking. Um, yeah, and let me know if there's anybody you'd like me to reach out to and chat uh, with. You know, quarantine times are weird, so let's uh, connect over Zoom. Why not? Um, let me know what you're reading in the comments. Um, I've got a little behind on my comics in the quarantine times, um, but I'm looking forward to, at some point soon, going to the comic book store, venturing in safely with my little mask, and picking up some books that I've been dying to read, old and new. Um, so I'd love some recommendations. You know where to find me, on Twitter, mostly. Some on Instagram. Of course, you can comment in the comment section down below as well. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and staying sane. I will see you guys next week, same-ish time, same place. And until then, this has been Nerd News with Destiny. I'm gonna be honest for all the real ones out there. I'm feeling a little low energy today, so I hope that was okay. Thank you, I hope y'all feel great. Okay, bye.